When I was four, I got as a present for my birthday by my mother my first LP recording. It was Art Rubinstein, the greatest pianist, playing with the English Chamber Orchestra, the Mozart Concertos. I was so addicted to this recording, I could listen to this over and over again, sometimes 15 times again. And I have to say, this recording made a strong mark on me. At age six, I asked my parents that I'd like to study piano and to get me piano lessons. Nobody played at home, nobody ever told me to learn or to practice. It was a strong passion and urge from within. If somebody would have told me back then, at age four, that 16 years later, I would find myself playing the very same Mozart concerto with the very same orchestra, the English Chamber Orchestra in London, I would never believe it, but it happened. I was 20, and I was then studying at the Royal Academy of Music in London. I was traveling the world, I was playing competition, winning competitions, really playing with lots of orchestras, and everything seemed to be so glamorous and fantastic for a 20-year-old. And some of it was indeed. But let me tell you something. The amount of competitions I didn't win is far greater than the ones I did. It's just that nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about failures, nobody talks about competitions you lose, blackouts that you have, opportunities you don't get. And it was at that moment that I realized that if I want to be a performer, I have to find a different way to do it, a different way to leave a mark. I was very keen then, and I'm very still eager today, to find what are the traits of those who leave a mark. What do they do differently that people memorize them, and how do they do it? I personally believe that it's all a matter of living an experience. Not the notes, not the content, but the ability to live an experience. Leonard Bernstein used to say so beautifully, people will forget what you said or what you did, but they will never forget how you let them feel. So it's all about the experience, and I'd love to take you now to a small exercise on the Bach prelude, and I'm going to play you the prelude in three different ways, and we're going to have a vote afterwards and see which one you like the most. Ready? Number one. Number two. And number three. Let's have our vote. Who like number one, please? Who like number two? Nice. Who like number three? <gasps> wow. <laughs> I was starting to worry you're not going to vote today. <laughs> okay, I also like number three. I love number three. But let me tell you this. If I was to play number three in an international piano competition, I would be kicked out right away. And the reason is that I broke the rules. Because Bach, when he wrote that music in 1732, he didn't have a, grand, a modern piano. He didn't have a piano that he can create so um, romantic music. He didn't have the pedals. It sounded more like Chopin. But it doesn't matter, because it touched you, and we made it together, something meaningful together for ourselves. We broke the rules. And that brings us to the first trait of those who leave a mark, which is the ability 
to break the rules and make it your own. Now, don't be mistaken, this exercise is not about music. It's about life. It's about choices we make. It's about interpretations we give to different texts, to different titles. And I have to say, in my workshops for creativity and innovation for leaders, I love to give them this exercise because the notes, those Bach notes, this text is just text, it's just a frame. And what we do inside the frame, what counts. Because what's special is how you take this frame of time and making it your own. And I have to say to you, we have the freedom to design our experience. Imagine that you get a job, a new job, and the job title, the job description, it's just a starting point, it's just a baseline. What counts is what you put inside, your soul, your life experience, your ideas, your imagination, your creativity. The more creative you are, the more subjective you are, the better impact you're going to give. It's all in our hands to make the difference. And I want to take you now to a fourth option of Bach, and we'll do it together, because I'm going to improvise, and I don't know what will happen, but we'll take the same note, and we'll make them a little bit different. This was unexpected, this was an improvisation I did, but it leads us to the second trait of those who leave a mark, which is the ability to be disruptive and make meaningful surprises. Now, it takes lots of innovation and courage to be disruptive, but it's such a necessity in making an experience. When I was 12, I innocently thought that if I was to play between six to eight hours a day, every day, I would be ready for any performance. I could go on stage and play. But it was such an innocent thought. It was such a false belief, because at that age, I was also invited to give a live recording to the radio. And after 15 minutes of playing, I had a terrible disruption. I forgot the notes. I had a memory slip, a blackout. I stopped playing. Somehow I continued, but it wasn't the same. It was a huge disruption. And I realized that until that point, I was only taught and told not to make mistakes. I was never told and taught what to do when mistakes actually happen. And you know, mistakes happen to all of us all the time. So I realized then that it was very tough for me, but also a great opportunity, because performance is not about security. Performance is about how you act on the now, how you solve problems online. And it was then that I realized that I need to learn to do two things if I want to cope with disruptions. First, I need to learn to improvise, to give me the confidence and assurance on stage. And number two, I have also to practice at home with disruptions. I want to give you an example. You all know the Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven, and if I go to the piano and I play this, this sonata, but with swapping hands, for example... I can even go a bit crazy and ask myself, take the chair out, we'll take the chair completely off, and we'll play it very fast, very loud. Thank you. <laughs> this is not comfortable to do. This is a very disruptive thing to do, but why am I doing this? I'm doing this, although it's not comfortable, in order to be 200% ready and to give a 100% performance. 
Now, each one of us can practice with disruptions, whether at home or at work. We can drive home in different ways. We can go on stage and give our presentation without the PowerPoint for once. We can do lots of things to train our mind to think in different modes. Try to speak one word in two languages, I mean, one word in each language, and see what happens to your brain while you're doing it. It's fascinating. I have to tell you the story that happened to me a few months ago. I was arriving uh, up north to give a concert, and you know, usually you come an hour and a half before a concert to get ready, and I'm arriving to the hall, and I'm so happy. I'm seeing this grand stanway, and I'm thinking to myself, it's going to be a great easy concert today. And then I open the lid, and I'm shocked. You know why I'm shocked? Because this C-sharp, the middle C-sharp is gone. No key. I'm looking around, and luckily, I saw that it's here. So I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, I'm, I have to call David, the stage manager. I'm saying to David, David, we've got a problem. You have to call a piano tuner as fast as possible, otherwise we can't have that concert tonight. And David looks at me and says, I don't know where you are, but here in this place, this hour, no piano tuners. You'll have to manage. And I'm saying to David, I can't manage. This is outrageous. You know, all my pieces are in C-sharp, middle C-sharp. I can't give this concert. You've got to call someone, please. And David says, what's your name? And I'm saying, Orit. He said, Orit, listen. He comes and sits on my bench and doing, how much you have here? <laughs> 100? One less, who cares? So I caught my head and I said, David, you're right. We're going to solve it together. And I realized I've got to do something different. And I told David, listen, you've got to come and bring any glue that you can find. And we're going to stick that C sharp with any glue that you're going to bring to make this concert happen tonight. Now, you don't do those things for 200,000 piano of Stanway. And David brought a glue. And we stick that C sharp there, believe it or not. And I'm not going to tell you where it was, so I'm not, I don't want to be sued ever. <laughs> but it's still there with the glue of David. Now, those things happen all the time, and I can continue to tell you more stories of disruption. But now I'd love to show you a short film of a great disruptive conductor named Bobby McFerrin. And Bobby McFerrin is working with the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra right here in this very stage. Let's watch. Great one. <laughs> Bobby McFerrin. So it's really all about being disruptive. It's about stepping out of our comfort zones into our growing zones. It's about playing a different game. Remember, no guts, no glory. Now, we've had the two traits, which is breaking the rules and make it your own, and we had also being disruptive, but none of those works if we lack the third element which is the passion, to be passionate about what you do. I want to take you to the piano back and play you Albany with Espanol, and we'll just do the job. Is it nice? Is it nice? It's not nice. You're being nice to me. Let's make it nice. It's a little bit better, I think. I'd love to play you some more of that. We'll see if we have some time. Albert Einstein used to say, I have no special talent for anything. I'm just passionately 
curious. You know, most people are passionate when they have a reason. Most people are passionate when they have a dream they want to pursue. And then when failure comes, it doesn't take them out of their path because they look forward straight ahead like a marathon runner with inner vision and inner motivation and then don't waste energy looking sideways and they don't take no for an answer. You know that Johann Sebastian Bach spent four months in jail because he broke the rules. Did you know that Mozart never got any job he applied for? And I don't have to tell you that the Beatles tried many record companies until they got the final one. All of those had passion. All of those had a dream. My passion and my dream is to bring people closer to classical music in a different way. I also have the passion of bringing leaders into extremes and innovative work. And if you have to ask yourself one question, if you want to check how passionate you are about what you do for a living, let's ask ourselves one question. Am I willing to pay to do what I do for my living? Are you willing to pay for your job? Sounds crazy, I know. But if you're willing to pay even a little bit, that means you can live passionately and you can leave a mark on others. You are. Remember, be a dreamer. We are all composers. It's not the stories we tell, it's the melody behind the words. You can make it your own. You can make it so meaningful and beautiful. We are all composers and it's all in our hands to make the difference. I think I owe you some Albanese for the end. <laughs> <laughs>